Hello, everyone, and welcome to the presentation of the Kai paper titled The Effects of Explicit Intention Communication, Conspicuous Sensors, and Pedestrian Attitude in Interactions with Automated Vehicles. Automated vehicles can have many benefits, such as reducing accidents because the system cannot get tired and won't make as many human errors, uh, and a lack of deliberate violations, such as crossing a red light. And AVs will also be able to drive more economically, leading to energy savings. Uh, AVs are able to communicate amongst each other, reducing the amount of traffic jams, and they will lead to increased mobility for the disabled. However, for these benefits to become a reality, AVs need to first gain societal acceptance. Driving is a social phenomenon, which means that communication is very important. Research has indicated two areas of communication, the first being vehicle-centric cues, such as braking, slowing down, or speeding up, and the second being driver-centric cues, such as gestures, eye contact, or a head nod, perhaps. And this communication is often revolved around assessing intentions. Does this in driver intend to yield for me? Does that pedestrian intend to cross the road? And that begs the question, how will AVs be able to communicate their intentions? Of course, vehicle-centric cues can be programmed into the behavior of the vehicles. And there's many uh, studies into this as well. But research has shown that replacing driver-centric cues can have many benefits as well. And the most commonly proposed solution to do this is an external human-machine interface. However, the number of empirical studies is still relatively small, and they're often exploratory, using many different EHMI designs, as you see an example of three right here. Furthermore, there are often large individual differences amongst pedestrians, and studies have mostly focused on traditional characteristics, such as demographics, law compliance, and risk-seeking behavior. And although these traditional characteristics will also have implications for pedestrian AV interactions, it is also reasonably uh, reasonable to assume that pedestrians will interact differently with AVs than with human-driven vehicles. One interesting theory about pedestrian AV interactions comes from Miller Ball, who theorizes that when AVs become prevalent, the pedestrian will be king. This is because pedestrians know that the vehicles will be able to see them, react instantly to them, and always move to avoid harm. So pedestrians can just step on the road and the vehicles will accommodate for them. However, this depends on three very important things. The first being the pedestrian's knowledge of AV technology, knowing that the vehicle can see them, react instantly, and always move to avoid harm. The second being a trust that this technology indeed works correctly and does so. And the third being an ability to perceive the vehicle as being an AV as opposed to being a human-driven vehicle. Now, the first will come with time and communication. However, the second and third are interesting to look at. So the first, attitude towards aut uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, we see that the public opinion appears to be split with large individual differences, which begs the question, will people with a more positive attitude also be more willing to cross in front of an aut uh, automated vehicle? And looking at the other, the ability to perceive uh, a vehicle as being autonomous, it's helpful to look at vehicles that have been or are currently being tested on public roads. And what you see is that they all share a common characteristic, namely the conspicuous sensor system on top of their rooftops. So that leads to the questions, will a con uh, conspicuous sensor system act as a visible reminder of a vehicle's self-driving uh, driving capability? And will this increase pedestrians' willingness to cross the road? Or does this depend, for instance, on people's attitude towards AVs? For instance, will people with a more trusting attitude be more willing to cross when they see that it's an AV versus people with a more negative attitude? Now, to answer these questions, we designed an experiment uh, using a virtual environment in which the participant was a pedestrian. We had two independent variables that we varied within subjects. The first being the sensors, whether they were present or absent on the vehicle. And the second being an EHMI. Now, in the top photo, you see the EHMI communicating a non-yielding in, uh, intent. And in the lower picture, you see uh, it communicating a yielding intent with two small bars animated uh, moving inwards. This led to four different vehicle types, with one, for instance, 
having both the centrics and the EHMI, and another could be having the centrics but no EHMI. The measures we used, uh, first a start questionnaire to measure pedestrians' attitudes towards automated vehicles, then uh, interim questionnaires that measured how they perceived the interaction between the vehicle type that they just uh, interacted with. And these questions include their feelings of uh, safety and comfort, but also whether they thought the vehicle appeared automated and whether they felt that they could assess the vehicle's intentions. And finally, we asked them to press a button, and that is the big round button at the front of the HTC Vive controller that we used. And we asked participants to press the button when they felt safe to cross, keep pressing as long as they felt safe to cross, and release when they no longer felt safe to cross, which allowed for a continuous um, input on their feelings of safety throughout the entire experiment. When looking at the results, we saw that for those with a more positive attitude, interactions felt safer, more comfortable, and more pleasant, but we did not see an effect on their willingness to cross, measured with the press of the button. Perhaps this is because more experience is necessary for a behavioral effect to occur. As one participant noted, I currently don't have any practical experience, so in this experiment, I treated them as a car with a driver, but I would definitely cross earlier with a self-driving vehicle than with a driver. When looking at the external machine interface, our goal was for it to communicate the AV's intended actions. And when we look at the results from the interaction questionnaire, we see that indeed, in the conditions where there was an EHMI represented by the red and orange bars, we see that pedestrians did feel that they were more able to assess the vehicle's intentions. Also, uh, one example quote saying, it communicated, oh, we have seen you, we are going to stop, you can cross. And this helped me judge if they had seen me because there was no driver who could deal with a hand gesture, for instance. So uh, we succeeded in this goal. The reason we wanted to communicate the AV's intended actions is so pedestrians can interact as safely, comfortably, and efficiently with the AV as possible. Now, in terms of feelings of safety and comfort, we look at the interaction questionnaire again, and we see that once again, these are higher for the conditions where there was an EHMI present. In terms of the efficiency of crossing behavior, we can look at this graph showing the percentage of people uh, feeling safe to cross as a function of the distance between them and the vehicle. And what we see is a gray reference line indicating uh, the distance at which the EHMI started communicating its yielding intent. And we see, once again, looking at the red and orange lines, that the conditions where an EHMI was present, pedestrians reacted rather quickly and were more able to more quickly uh, make the correct crossing decision. Uh, when looking at some relevant quotes, we see, without the light, I was really looking myself to see how fast this car went. And with the light, I could immediately recognize that I could cross, so I did. And I reacted with a lot of trust in the technology. The car sees me so I can cross. And as long as I saw that it wasn't fully lit, I felt safe to cross. And I did not have to think about that any further. So this goal succeeded as well. Now, in terms of appearing automated, uh, the sensors were not always fully understood as being the LiDAR system they were meant to represent. A little over half the participants were able to understand it fully, but also a significant portion uh, mistook it for a Google Street View car, for instance. When uh, we look at the feeling of uh, an automated appearance, whether the vehicle appeared automated to the uh, participants, we see that the sensors did increase this feeling, but so did the HMI, with the condition where both were present being rated as looking most autonomous. We found no difference in willingness to cross between whether the ses sensors were present or absent, as you can compare the red line with the orange one or the blue one with the purple one, for instance. But participants did tell us that recognizing AVs would lead to the right expectations early, with one participant saying, I think especially in the beginning that it's very important that people see the difference, and that they do not get startled by the fact that there's nobody sitting in the car. And another noting that then you know that you're not dealing with a person that can do all kinds of strange things, but that it reacts in a certain systematic way to which you can adjust. And even though we did not see a behavioral effect for, this, uh, for the sample as a whole, we did see that the sensors had a larger positive effect for those with negative attitudes. 
Now, at first, this was surprising to us, but perhaps this is because the sensors provided a certain assurance of the vehicle's capabilities and that those with a lower trust who may, without the sensors, have felt that the vehicle would not be able to see them correctly were now assured that the vehicle could. Another possible explanation is that it provided a certain congruence with expectations. As the previous participant also said, um, when there's no driver in a vehicle where you did expect that, that can lead to some negative reactions. And these will be more negative for those with negative attitudes towards automated vehicles. So because it allowed them to form the correct expectations early, um, this might have had a more positive effect for those with negative attitudes. This leads to some design insights. Uh, the first being that an EHMI contributes to a more pleasant user experience with pedestrians. And the second is, of course, sensors can become smaller or hidden, but should they? We saw that pedestrians wanted to recognize AVs early so they could form the right expectations. And especially for people with uh, lower trust in AV technology, these sensors had a very positive effect. So our recommendation is to include both an EHMI and some form of a visible cue of automation. Finally, uh, suggestions for future work. Uh, future work could include a more dynamic traffic situation. In our situation, we uh, only included one vehicle and no other traffic participants, which allowed for a more controlled situation. But of course, in real life, this is less likely to happen. And when using a more dynamic situation, we can test whether the interpretation of the EHMI will be as targeted as it was in our experiment, with participants noting that they thought the EHMI communicated that they had been seen. Whereas if there's more people on the road, they might uh, correctly perceive it as just communicating that the car intends to yield. And also, uh, this can test people's reliance on the EHMI, as some participants in our study noted that when the EHMI changed state, this was all they needed to make the crossing decision. But when there's more vehicles on the road, people can no longer safely rely on just one source of information. The second is that future work can use a mix of AVs and human drivers, where we can properly test the effects of sensors and whether pedestrians are able to distinguish between the human-driven vehicles and the AVs uh, when they see the sensor system on the rooftops. And finally, uh, future studies can use a crosswalk. Pedestrians noted that when there is no crosswalk, they weren't sure if the autonomous vehicle was going to stop for them. But when there is a crosswalk, they expect these AVs to be programmed to always stop, whereas they would never be sure with a human driver. So they say that that would definitely affect their crossing behavior. So that concludes this presentation. Uh, if you have further questions, please don't hesitate to contact me or one of my co-authors. And thank you for your attention.